And actually, before you can begin using Obsidian, you have to download it. The URL is obsidian.md. That's the URL that you can use to get it, and that's the, the landing page for Obsidian, the company as a whole. Once you land here, the starting page or the, the home page will have a button for you to download the software for your operating system. It's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And again, the page will detect your operating system. So you'll just click uh, this button to download Obsidian and save it to your folder. Um, it'll be a different um, file form or file extension if you're using Windows uh, and, and Linux or Linux. Um, and then I won't go through the installer. It's a really simple setup. You just you, you run the installer, you click next, 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 and eventually you'll have a program on your computer called Obsidian. Uh, and so in Mac, you can use Spotlight to, to open Obsidian. And once you've downloaded and opened Obsidian, you will be presented with this screen. Now, before we begin here, I want to state that Obsidian's greatest strength, its flexibility, is also its greatest source of distraction. And so in this configure your environment for smart notes in Obsidian, I am going to keep it as basic as possible using as few plugins, no community plugins at all, just the bare minimum of what, what comes in with the box and then also some core plugins that come built in with the software that I found useful in taking smart notes with Obsidian. So without further ado, the first thing that you need when you uh, download and install Obsidian is you need to create a vault. A vault is the place that Obsidian stores all of its files. So if you didn't read that from the, the homepage, Obsidian is a locally based um, file um, system that builds on top of local files uh, that are all written in Markdown. That means every single file that you have in your vault will be first stored locally. Now there's other systems that you can use to sync them across devices such as GitHub or Obsidian sync feature or even Dropbox or Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive, all would work. Uh, but the key thing is that everything's local, meaning that you have the most control over it. It's not in the cloud somewhere where you don't have control over it and have to back it up. Uh, and if the platform was ever taken offline, you would lose all your knowledge. So even if Obsidian goes away, you still have all of your knowledge in Markdown files, which is uh, kind of like a fancy markup language that trans transfers very well into HTML and other other outputs, such as um, like Pandadocs will output to PDF and EPUB and stuff like that. So it's a very versatile uh, language to use, and a lot of technical writing is done in, in Markdown. Uh, so to begin, let's create a new vault. I'm going to name it Smart Notes because we're, we're doing a course on Smart Notes. And then you want to pick a, a location. So I'm going to click Browse by the location. I'm just going to select my desktop. Uh, it says open, but it's really just selecting that particular folder. So you can see here is where I'm going to be creating my smart notes vault, which will have all my, my files. So when you create the vault, it creates some, some hidden files in the file system that um, set up, configure your workspace for Obsidian, et cetera. And it also will be where all your markdown files are that consist of your notes. So let's go ahead and click create. And this is an empty vault. And so this is where people get completely overwhelmed, uh, myself included when I first started, because it is a completely clean slate. So let's just make this bigger so we can see it a little better. So you, as you can see here, it's kind of like the void of space. There's there's so much that you can do here. Some simple navigation here is your fi file structure that you would think about when you're just browsing files and file explorer, etc., um, where you can create a new note in a folder. So that's all Obsidian exists of. Um, now it is a link first. So instead of uh, building a hierarchy and using tags to categorize stuff, you use links to navigate them. And that is why it's a really good choice for note taking and particularly the Zettelkasten method or using smart notes, because that is the whole purpose of that system is to link your ideas. So to build connections and to organize your notes, through their connections instead of through the category of knowledge that they, they fit in, like in an archive. So to get started, the very first thing that we want to do after that we've done and installed is we want to enable the daily note. So in Smart Notes, there's three types of notes. And we'll go way more in depth on these later. But there's fleeting, literature, and permanent notes or slipbox notes. And Obsidian, we have a way to capture all of those. Obsidian even has a mobile app that you can use. So it really can kind of replace your physical notebook uh, if you want to, I still carry a physical notebook because I don't have a smartphone. So I don't use the mobile version of Obsidian, but it is possible. And that's what makes the daily note useful. And I spend about eight hours a day plus at the computer working and I have Obsidian open anyway. So to do that, the very first thing that we'll do is we will create a folder for the daily note. So we'll, we'll click this new folder button and we'll name it daily notes. And then the next thing that we'll do is we'll enable uh, a core plugin called Daily Note. 
So if you've used Roam Research, it has this um, built-in feature where every day you get like a new scratch space or a new note node uh, for the date that you you begin to put all your ideas and you link that way. The daily note is very similar uh, in that regard, or at least the way that you can use it. So if we go into um, core plugins, so let's go back one second. Settings down here, little gear on the bottom left. We will click core plugins. Now these are plugins that come with it. There is an extensive library of community plugins that are awesome. I am avoiding them just for the sake of simplicity in here. Uh, you can scroll or you can search the plugins here. So if we do daily notes, there it is. And we just toggle that on. Now notice when we enable that, a plugin option showed up here for daily notes. If we click daily notes, we can see how it's going to name our notes with this year, month, day, which I recommend. It keeps them nice and organized. Uh, and then the new file location for a daily note, we can specify as daily notes. And you can also specify a template if you want. I'm not going to go into that in this course. Um, but if you find a particular format or whatever that you want, you can create a template for it and point it to that. So every new note that you create for the day, maybe it has a heading of the day name or some nice emojis in there or something like that to make it a little bit more visually stimulating, you can do that. So that's all the configuration that we need for the daily note. And we'll just click this little box. So once we enable that plugin, we have this new button on the left hand side. Let's make this all a little bit bigger so it's easier to see, but it says open today's daily note. And when we click that, we get today's daily note. So today is uh, November 1st of 2021 at the time of this recording. And we notice that it automatically put it in the daily notes folder. Uh, so now you notice that um, you'll notice as I go through this, that each type of note has its own separate space. And that's very important because that's what avoids the uh, unsurmountable mess that typically occurs when you take notes. Uh, because there's no distinction between the different types of notes. They're all kept in one notebook and all together. And that creates a lot of clutter where most of the time it's better just to set it on fire and to start over. And we're hopefully going to avoid that throughout this course. The next thing that we want to build is a reference system. So this is something... Um, it depends on the need that you have for writing. I'm not an academic, so I don't have a, a I don't have a real need to get super super clear uh, bibli biblio bibliographical there we go data uh, from my notes. So I typically just have my reference system where my literature notes are, and that's fine for me in Obsidian. There are other programs that you can use like Zotero uh, that will organize it much nicer for you. But again, for me and my purposes. It's fine. So I'm going to click new note again in here, reference, and I'm just going to name it reference. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it for the reference system. This is where you'll put all your uh, literature notes. So there's a distinction. Um, fleeting notes will be stored in the daily notes. Literature notes will be stored in the reference. The key difference here is that fleeting notes are um, a kind of ephemeral. They're temporary. They're temporary rem reminders of tasks or ideas that you've had. Uh, and they're meant to be deleted. So if you had a physical notebook, you would obviously, when it's done, you'd throw it in the trash. And a lot of times it become useless after a couple of days anyway. Reference notes and our re the reference system, the literature notes, on the other hand, are permanently stored. Because you would always want to restore or store and archive the information that you got, um, that you captured from your literature note because they're used to help you understand. And so they're often useful if you need to refresh your mind on a particular concept or, or area of knowledge without rereading the entire um, source of information that you got the knowledge from. The next step in this configuration is to set up your Slipbox. And to do that, we will set up one more plugin. Um, but first, let's create the folder. So if we create a new folder again, we'll just name it Slipbox and click Enter. And then we're going to enable uh, the Zettelkast and Prefixer plugin. plugin. Now, what I'm going to talk about is a little controversial in the Zettelkast and, and Obsidian communities, which is do you name notes? Do you not name notes? Do you use a Prefixer and all that stuff? There's several valid ways to use a note. I'm going to walk through um, setting up the Zillicast and Prefixer and using just an arbitrary name for the notes. Um, and I'll dive into more reasons uh, why that is the case later. But the number one reason that I do it is so well, two reasons. One, that I can avoid availability bias, which is just remembering um, the notes that I most recently took and I can identify them by name. And then the other one is to avoid the first time principle, which is the beginning of everything and naming things is hard. If you're in any kind of software development and you've got to name a project or something like that, that's often the most difficult thing uh, and wastes a lot of time. And so I've decided to just delegate the name of that um, to the prefixer. But then also if you 
um, having implemented the physical version of the Slipbox, where I, I took um, use smart notes to take notes on smart notes and use the physical system and implemented it, there wasn't a way to have direct search for notes, which is what a name allows us to do. And so I'm removing that ability um, inside Obsidian by giving it a name because I won't remember the arbitrary names. And instead, I'm going to use keywords, and we'll touch on that later. So to enable the Zettelcast in, we'll just make this a little bit bigger. Um, go to Settings. This is, again, another built-in plugin. So if we go to Core Plugins, and we'll just type ZE for Zettelcast in, we'll enable the Zettelcast and Prefix. Now, if we go down to the Zettelcast and Prefixer under Plugin Options, we can see that we can specify the folder. Um, you can specify the Slipbox, however, I'd recommend that you hold off on that because it, I found it very useful if you're creating the notes to separate the act of writing the note from connecting the note and adding it to the slip box. So whether or not you want to put it up, whether or not you want it to automatically put it into the slip box uh, is up to you, but I found some usefulness in that. Uh, there's also a template option. So if you had some kind of metadata that you wanted to include, you could do that. And of course, if you wanted to, you can change the little ID format. That's just the sequence of, of uh, the timestamp that it's going to use to name. So this particular plugin, just like the daily note, it uses a timestamp to generate the name. Uh, again, for me, it's just any name will do, more or less. Uh, and then um, I can be on my way to write the note. Removes that friction for me. Instead of having to think about what the perfect name for the note might be or whatever uh, the case might be. Now, there are other valid cases for, for naming notes, um, and I'll provide some literature at the end. Um, so you can make up your own mind. But if you wanted to change it to something shorter than what this is here or longer or different, you can do that. And there's this format reference here that allows you to do that. So now the slip box is ready and uh, we have another new button. So we have this create new Zettel cast in note. And when we do that, it'll generate us a new note with an ID that we can type a note. We'll just leave this here as a placeholder um, and the configuration. Now the final folder that you'll want to have is the entire purpose of this entire system, which is to generate some kind of work. Um, the how to take smart notes in Obsidian, um, sorry, the how to take smart notes book um, is very focused on on writers. And for a good reason, that's the whole, it was who the inventor who created it was a writer. Uh, and it's very much focused on that. But I think smart notes can be expanded to pretty much in anybody that does content creation uh, because we're all working on projects and at the core of a lot of things is writing even youtube videos and stuff they come with scripts and podcasts come with scripts and so whatever type of content you're creating you can benefit from this use now the ultimate goal and you're going to have a signet you're going to need to have a significant um, motivation and reason for you to want to put in the the effort uh, required to start using this. There's a little bit um, of a learning curve because it allow, it forces you to adjust your workflow and change the way that you consume information, change the way that you process information. So if you don't have a really good reason to do that and you don't see the benefit in it, you're not going to fall through. Um, but for me, what's kept me going is projects. So that is the other folder that you want to have is a projects folder or a project folder, um, whatever you want to name, plural or not plural. So in here is where you would put all your project related notes. So some of the fleeting notes that you have will probably be tasks for like upload YouTube video or write first chapter of book or whatever that might be, or um, like a name for a section in there or a name for a, a conference talk or what have you. And so those fleeting notes can be processed and moved into the project notes. So fleeting notes are kind of like the beginning of all notes because there could be a fleeting note to just buy a particular book uh, or to read a particular article and that would turn into a literature note in the reference system. So there's not this linear progression from fleeting to literature to permanent always. Sometimes that's the case. But overall fleeting is kind of the, the starting point of all that. Um, and with the process, they just kind of turn into other types of notes. So project is one of those. Now in here, uh, we'll talk about what types of things so if you're writing it's going to be an outline if you're doing youtube it's going to be a script this is a folder for that um and then that how to organize that folder kind of gets into project management and stuff like that which is out of scope of what i'm going to talk about in this course so that is the final step in configuring your environment uh, the next thing that we'll walk through is actually taking the smart notes and walking through some examples using the book how to take smart notes um, as a way to populate this entire system